Hello, welcome to today's class. Today we would be discussing the CBSC net paper for psychology paper three. We'll be covering the next twenty sections for this class. So let's start with the first question here. The first question talks about the negative state relief model. So what is basically a negative state relief model? Under a negative state relief model, we try to understand that when we are suffering from uh, any feeling of pain or uh, any negative sensation. Uh, what we try to do is basically we try to provide help to others to regulate their mood okay so we try to bring out the negative uh, negative tendencies and bring in uh, a state of relief okay so it blosters your spirit for a long period of time is correct again and helping in uh, is a means to boost your emotion it's again correct okay so the options one four one two and four are correct here so the correct choice here would be c okay the next question talks about which one of the following is not a big five personality factors. Now, when we'll be taking a separate class on big five personality factors, we'll be talking about it in detail. Uh, today, let's understand the trick to learn the big five factors is the word ocean. Okay. Now, what does ocean stands for? So here, O stands for openness. A stands for uh, sorry. Uh, o stands for ocean uh, openness. C stands for consciousness. E stands for uh, extraversion, A stands for agreeableness, and N stands for neuroticism. So what is not a part of it is B, psychoticism. So the correct option here would be A, C, and D. Okay. So the only trick to remember the big five personality factors is the keyword ocean here. The next question talks about the assertion reason statement. So these are two different statements. Uh, which are talking about two different types of therapies. One is talking about transpersonal psychotherapy and other is talking about REBT that is rational emotive behavior therapy. So under rational emotive behavior therapy, uh, we generally include the concept of self-acceptance, flexibility, recognition and awareness. While transpersonal psychotherapy is a therapy where man considers himself as a spiritual being. So he emphasizes more on emotions and the aspects to uh, deal with the uh, client are much more experimental in nature okay so both assertion and reason are correct but since they are two different therapies they are not mutually related so the correct option here would be b that is both assertion and reason are correct and uh, reason does not explain assertion okay the next question is again a question on assertion reason you can refer the separate class on assertion reason where we have talked about how to solve the problems on assertion reason now in this question the first statement talks about organization uh, organizational justice okay so organizational justice is a perception of what is fair in a workplace and it includes three methods so you have the distributive method procedural method and interactional justice okay so there are three kinds of justice that are covered under organizational justice that is correct so distributive justice explains that usually an employee has much more tolerance towards overpayment rather than in underpayment. So if an employee is given a payment which is much more than his expect uh, than what he is expecting, then he would tolerate that, but he won't tolerate an underpayment to his uh, work. Okay, so that is what is distributive justice. So reason is correct. Okay, but reason alone does not explain this assertion because this assertion includes three different kinds of justice and we are explaining just one of these in the reason so both of them are correct and reason is not the correct explanation for this the next question is the strategy when you are uh, trying to gain response to a small request first and then you are trying to make a big risk uh, big request so i'm starting with a very small request and i'm trying to make a big re uh, request this tendency is known as foot in the door technique okay so the correct option here is c that is foot in the door technique let's move on to the next set of questions so we have the next set of questions here under this you have the first question as about the visual placement test. Now, what is visual pl uh, placement test and what does it talk about? So the visual placement test was conducted by Head and Hen 
and they basically talks about relationship between sensory feedback that occurs from self initiated motor and perceptual development okay so the correct choice for this question is b that is understanding the relationship between sensory feedbacks from self initiated uh, movements and perceptual development okay so it uh, he basically conducted a visual experiment by completing it on cats okay where the kittens were shown the experiments uh, uh, that uh, the experimenter's hand was slowly moving in front of it okay and the movement of the kitten's eye was recorded the next question talks about which of the following is not a correct elaboration of reading strategy in the field of literature so for a reading strategy in the field of literature it's very important to have careful reading you must have a good aim of reading and there should be identification of the problem so a b and c are correct and d is the incorrect option here the next question talks about mastery goals so what are mastery goals mastery goals are basically when we talk about uh, goals there are two kinds of goals you have mastery goals and you have performance goals okay so mastery goals are those which are aimed to which aim to improve or learn or seek challenges and in spite of the difficulties okay and performance goals are those where you try to improve okay and you try to improve further and further okay so that's what is the difference between mastery goal and performance goal and a mastery goal you try to uh, become very fluent in something it's not just understanding that thing but becoming fluent in that thing okay so that's what is mastery goal so the objective of mastery goal is very clear in the next question uh, in the next uh, statement it says teacher can stimulate mastery goals through self monitoring self improvement and deeper understanding that's again correct statement but this does not explain the assertion here okay so mastery goals are aimed to uh, aim that you learn despite of the difficulties okay but uh, these are not the only methods by which you can uh gain a control over mastery goals okay so both assertion and reason are correct but reason is not a correct explanation for the assertion next question talks about temporary support that pa parents provide to child okay until they can do a task alone is known as scaffolding that's a direct question based on um the concepts okay the next question talks about uh, permissive indulgent parents permissive intelligent parents are impulsive aggressive inconsiderate and demanding that's correct okay these people are high on wound that's correct but they are low on discipline and control so the reason becomes incorrect so it's very important that you read each and every word of the uh, question in a very careful manner because most of the student what they do is uh permissive parents are high on form they consider this statement as correct and they mark reason as correct but this is not the reality in reality what happens is you have to uh, understand the complete statement so parents are high on form this correct here but they are not high on discipline and control indeed they are low on discipline and control okay so just these two words make a difference here so the reason becomes incorrect okay so here what would be the answer would be assertion is correct and reason is incorrect okay so c is the correct choice here the next question talks about roger's theory now roger gave the concept of uh, <coughs> person centered counseling or client centered counseling okay and his main emphasis was unconditional positive regard and empathy so we'll cover uh, the client centered approach in detail in the further classes okay so the correct answer here would be d the next question is uh, when we are talking about sleep we are talking about the various waves that occur during sleep okay and we'll be talking about uh, the frequency of waves from uh, based on the uh, uh, frequency we'll be talking about which waves have the highest frequency okay so we have to arrange them in ascending order that's small to big okay now let's understand that beta waves have the highest frequency from 12 to 18 hertz okay followed by alpha waves have around uh, 8 to 12 hertz then you have theta waves at 4 to 7 hertz and you have delta waves 
at one to two, one to three hertz. Okay, so the smallest pickup is the delta. Then you have the theta. Then you have the alpha and the uh, beta. Okay, so that's the correct option. So the correct choice here would be A. The next question is: You have a list of theories given in a description. You have to match which theory uh, is uh, appropriate to which concept. So signal detection theory. Uh, what it does is basically it separates the effect of observer capacity and the response biasness. So that's the basic concept of signal detection. You are trying to detect a signal. So you are trying to understand what is the observer's capacity and what is the biasness in the response. Okay. So that's what is signal detection theory. Next is you have the Stevens power law. So since it's a very direct. Um, Link that you can draw here. So the question asks about power law, and one of the statements description here says, "Sensory subject, uh, sensory subjective magnitude grows in promotion to the intensity raised to a power." Okay, so power here. So you can directly match this. So Stevens power law is applicable to uh, one here. Then you have the minimum amount of stimulus to detect any stimulus uh, to detect a stimuli is known as absolute threshold. That is the basic definition of absolute threshold. Uh, we will discuss this more in psychophysics, where we will be talking about absolute threshold and differential threshold. And finally, you have the Fechner's law. So, under Fechner's law, we study that when the input is larger, okay, you need to have a corresponding sensory effect that is much more larger. Okay, so that's the Fechner's law. Okay. So these are the correct match for this. Now, in the next question, you have. The hypothalamic region and this hypothalamic region deals with what kind of uh, behavior? So, if there is a lesion in a specific hypothalamic region, what would it affect the most? So, you have lateral hypothalamus that's related to a lesion in a lateral hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamus would lead to uh, under uh, sorry, a lateral hypothalamus would lead to under eating, weight loss, low insulin. Okay, so. Three is the correct choice here. Okay, then you have uh, ventral uh, ventromedial hypothalamus that would be uh, linked to high uh, meal frequency, gain in weight, high insulin. Okay, so you'll have four here. Okay, then you have lateral preoptic areas that affect uh, your drinking. Okay, so the ability to uh, have a sensation of thirst and drinking. And finally, the preoptic area. So you have one that is deficit in uh, psychological mechanism of temperature regulation. Okay. Let's move on to the next set of questions that we'll be covering today. So as we can see, most of the questions here were based on understanding. Uh, only a few questions were based on direct knowledge. Okay, now Down syndrome is a direct question. Di Down syndrome is a uh, you chromosomal this uh, abnormality with an extra chromosome on uh, trisomy 21. So you have an extra X chromosome on uh, chromosome 21. Okay, so the correct answer here is C. Now the features of classical conditioning. So when we talk about classical conditioning, there are some things that we need to be very clear on. Uh, you have voluntary responses in operant conditioning. Okay, so if you are very sure about the differences between operant conditioning and classical conditioning, you can easily solve this question. Okay, so responses are voluntary in operant conditioning. Okay, and goal is to increase the rate. Uh, of an already occurring response is already uh, is also a phenomena of operant conditioning. Okay, because there is something that is already happening, and you are trying to increase the response of that behavior. So what you are doing is something related to operant conditioning. So one and four are part of operant conditioning. Okay, then um, classical conditioning is based on the principle of association by contiguity. That's correct. Okay. Antecedent stimulus are important in the formation of association. That's again correct for classical conditioning. And in classical conditioning, we try to create a new response to a stimulus. That's also correct. So two, three, and five are examples of classical conditioning. And one and 
Four are examples of operant conditioning. Okay. Now, which part of the brain is important for classical conditioning? So, cerebellum is the part of brain that is deeply involved with classical conditioning. We'll be doing the classical conditioning in detail in a separate class. So, where we can understand uh, the differences between classical and operant conditioning and the various uh, uh, concepts related to classical conditioning. The next question is again an assertion reason question. So here uh, it says conditioning fails to occur if an unconditioned stimulus and conditioned stimulus are paired in a random order. That's very correct because if I am having, so in classical conditioning, we usually talk about the Pavlov's experiment on dog. Okay, so if I am not matching the food and the bell, okay, so you have the conditioned uh, the unconditioned stimulus and the conditioned stimulus. If I am randomly matching those, there cannot be a proper conditioning. But if I am matching them in a sequence that I am providing food after every ring of bell, that means there is a correct order in which the food is being provided. Okay, so that is where you understand the meaning of conditioning. Okay, so assertion is correct because conditioning fails when unconditioned stimulus and conditioned stimulus are paired in random order. The next question is cognitive processes involve expectation play, uh, involving expectation play an important role in classical conditioning. That's again correct because uh, if they are conditioned in a fixed order, you can say that there is some relationship between the cognitive process and the expectation that the uh, the experimenter and the experimentee would have okay so you are trying to establish a relationship between them and that is an important element in classical conditioning and that occurs only when the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus are paired in a definite order not in a random order so reason is also correct and reason is the correct explanation for the assertion okay so you have a as the correct option here the next question is which is the correct sequence of career planning under career planning and decision making there are three things that you follow first is awareness next is exploration and finally you have preparation okay so the correct order would be this so exploration would be at the last that's for the sure so you have either a or b okay first of all you must be aware about yourself what you need to do okay then you need to know the career options that are available based on the options you will try to see what kind of education you need to get and whether you are suitable for that education or not and finally you will get a certain education and you will try to explore your career further uh, in depth okay so the correct option would be three, four, one, and two. So the choice A would be correct here. Now the next, next last question talks about the various models of memory and the theorists who have given this model. So you have the level of processing model given by Craig and Lockhart. Give the level of processing model. Okay. Then you have. Uh, Badley and Graham H gave the model on working theory. So you uh, gave the working memory model. Okay. Then you have uh, Tovle who tried to distinguish between the various kinds of memory. So that was the episodic memory, procedural memory. Then you have uh, Sherifin who gave the multi-store model or the model, uh, model, we should say. And finally, the Tovlix model, uh, where he tried to explain the three different natures. Okay, So the correct answer here would be, uh, you have working model associated to, uh, sorry, working model associated to Bedley and Hitch. Then you have the model theory associated to Atkinson and Sheriff and Tovlix concept of multi-store model. So under the multi-store model, he gave the uh, various levels. You have the episodic memory, you have the semantic memory. Okay, so that was what was explained by Tovle. So these are the correct matches here. With this, we cover 
the next 20 sections on the cbsc net paper for psychology paper 3 we'll be covering the last set of 15 questions in the next class till then have a good day ahead